this we are trying to do a prostate uh, microwave therapy with uh, uh, urologics and it's called cool thermotherapy as uh, usual uh, I do that for people who have a larger prostate size um, and uh, without any medial lobes or, or, or without any uh, and the prostate is pretty uh, pretty regular okay so I'm going to do the prostate block as usual um, you can see um, in that um, area where so that is that is the seminal vesicle that's the prostate and I have I have the um, local um, which I which I give I call this the Mount Everest sign right here between the seminal vesicles and the prostate so if you notice my um, needle goes there and I inject some local right there see that area becoming black that's where um, and then I inject 10 cc or 1 percent valocaine and the block is because this achieves a very high temperature the block should be affected so I put 10 cc on one side and then go for the go to the other side again this is that area between the seminal vesicle and the prostate this area we do the same thing on that side too and that if you notice that all right I take uh, the cool thermotherapy catheter, lubricate it, and I do this by no touch technique. If you notice, it's a stiff catheter, so you can do that. So I'm holding all the way to the base. So the part which goes inside the urethra, we're not even touching that part. This comes pre sterilized from the uh, company, and we have got. I'll show you the ports in just a second. Once I know that it's, it's inside, I inflate the balloon with 10 cc of water and put a plug at this this is to drain the bladder just in case the patient's bladder gets too full this is to drain the bladder however right now the patient is okay now what i do is I have the patient to bend his knees both knees then the and the, i put the rectal probe in there you notice the rectal probe is all prepared and it's got the balloon and the th temperature sensors this has five different spots of monitoring the temperature so it's very accurate even in one spot gets covered by fecal matter the other spots can pick it up and this is the balloon which is inflated just to make sure that we keep the um, temperature sensors against the anterior rectal wall so I place this in the and I, my assistant puts 90 cc's of air, <coughs> 60 and 30, 90 cc's of air in the balloon and takes out and takes out 20 cc's to keep a total of 70 cc's there. Right. Next what we do is take what's called a comfort pad. So the patient can uh, uh, completely, very uh, comfortably do that. So first we put this, this is a vice. This grips the catheter. The, this sits on the rectal probe and this grips the catheter. If you notice how this grips the catheter so that the balloon doesn't slide out or in. Because there have been some problems in the past with the balloon sliding up or, up or in. This keeps the balloon in place. All right, so and then we put this the comfort pad so that they, the patient can have the procedure without any discomfort. Because he just lies down and there is no discomfort. Now, we um,
this is attached to the uh, catheter. This is attached to the um, machine. And there are three different spots for three different, and this, uh, you cannot go wrong with this. This is the treatment part of it. If you notice, it goes in and you turn it once, and that's, the, it'll stay there. Okay, and again, I took it off. Yeah, you took it off, right? This is the uh, this is for the prosthetic urethra. It monitors the temperature of the prosthetic urethra. So that was the treatment catheter. This is for the prosthetic urethra. Again, it goes in only one slot. There are different slots for different things, and this this gets really hot. And if you notice, while I was doing it, my assistant put the cooling. There is a refrigerator here, and we'll show you show that uh, thing in just a second. So um, she put the in and out. So constantly while we are heating the prostate, the urethra is kept cool by running chilled water. This is the part where we put hundreds. This is a disposable bag. We put hundred cc of water saline in there, and it's got a pump. If you notice, and one of the tubing goes through the uh, pump and the other tubing is the return tubing. So this is how we circulate the water and this is a refrigerator unit. It actually refrigerates the water to a certain temperature. And this is shut down and then we have, we usually go with the standard protocol and if you notice the rectal unit serial number and the cooling unit serial number is automatically read by this so we don't have to type it in. This is the advanced cool wave ther thermotherapy. It's automatically typed it in so that we cannot reuse the catheter. Okay? We usually go with the standard protocol. We can go with moderate or uh, fa fast protocol. Usually, if the patient's got a small prostate, you want to slowly ramp it up, we go with a slow protocol. Uh, or you can customize the protocol. But here, we're going with the standard protocol. So we do this and click, click uh, hit on next. And it asks us to make sure we have got all this, um, you know, a checklist in place. And we know that we do. And we press the on button. Once we press the on button, it stabilizes. It causes the temperature stabilization, causes rectal unit calibration. It's a very safe uh, treatment option. And we give one, uh, we had already given one uh, sublingual lepsin before the treatment, an hour before, now we're given the second sublingual so that that prevents bladder spasms and the temperature calibration is done. And then we ask the patient, we, uh, we talk to tell them that there are two things which you will notice. One, you may notice something warm in the area, perineal area, that is expected. Um, what we need to do is um, think about it as if you're sitting in a sauna. It's a pleasurable heat, not a painful heat. As long as you think about it that way, that it's not alarming, it's just a normal thing, you'll be fine. Second thing, you'll notice that uh, you, um, you, you will notice that um, um, you might feel like having to go to the bathroom, okay? There are two things I do right now. I do a quick check here with my probe, and if you notice, focus it there. That is, and I just, two things I do. One, I make sure the balloon is in place. And if you notice, the balloon is in place, right? I take a picture of that. That's the balloon. And number two, I tell the patient, look, there's hardly any urine in the bladder. That's a feedback for you that the st sensation which you're having, it's a sensation. It's not the true thing, okay? And that's the reason I gave you the sublingual, the little anti-spasm, medication okay that's basically it from time to time I do check the position of the catheter to make sure it's in the right spot and make sure that um, uh, the balloon has not moved but since we have this vice this grip thing it it grips the catheter in such a way it doesn't move it doesn't move meanwhile if you notice it uh, already calibrated the rectal unit it's already calibrated the urethral temperature calibration. Then you calibrate the pump. And 
um, pump calibration is uh, quite quick and uh, if you notice it's already 80% there frequency calibration also is done so all these things are being done just to make sure every time we turn the machine on it calibrates itself so factory calibration is not usually required unless we run into any problems and if we do uh, so this is how it gets started the, temper the thing is started it first ramps up if you notice these are the temperatures the green line is the urethral temperature the uh, pink line is the rectal temperature and the T line is the is the is coolant temperature, rectal and urethral temperature. So basically we are ramping it up for the treatment to start. And the treatment doesn't start till we have certain things in place. The the treatment has has started because uh, the treatment parameters, can you zoom down here? Mm -hmm. Treatment parameters are the urethra temperature has to be more than or equal to 35 degrees and the urethra minus coolant difference has to be more than 20 degrees. So if you notice here, the reason the temp uh, treatment has started because the power is more than 65. If you notice, the uh, power has to be more than 65 or the rectal RTU unit is more than 41 degrees. So here, if you notice, the reason the treatment has started is because it, his power has gone up. Power usually goes up very rapidly first. It's just like when you first start the car, you have to press on the power to get the car into a cruising speed. After you get to the cruising speed, it will straighten down. Now, this patient's prostate is very large, so it required a lot more power to get the treatment going. Actually, the power has hit the ceiling. It cannot go more than 75, so, or 75 watts. In this prostate, because it's a large prostate, it's treating, but it is it's maximized the power required. Any pain? Any discomfort at all? It's all not much. What kind of discomfort? Uh, it's, it's just a little pain. It's not, it's not much. A little burning sensation. There's a burning sensation. You don't have the urge to go to the bathroom or anything yes. here? Yeah. That's something which, which you feel. But it's not unbearable, right? Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. That's how we want it to be done. As a safety measure, so that this is this machine does does it all there is hardly any operator intervention when things are going okay but to make sure that we don't walk away and leave the patient all by himself they've got this safety feature every so often maybe five minutes or so they will ask you to make sure the catheter is in the right place and everything in the right position so what i do is just for, for as a safety, I quickly check the position of the catheter and make sure it's in the right position. If you notice, it's still in the right position, right where it was before. So I know that it's in the right position and then I press the OK button. I make sure everything is in the right place, the catheter uh, has not slid out the, of the vise and everything and then we are OK. Then we get started with the, and it continues the same way. The treatment is uh, going quite uh, well. We are on coming to about the end of the treatment. If you notice, the energy usage is quite high again because of prostate size being about 80 grams. But everything is in a straight line, which is the way we like it. It is doing great. Lying down, we have no problems. And uh, We'll finish the thing, deflate the balloon from the urethra, treatment catheter, deflate the rectal balloon, remove and dispose all the disposables. Uh, and the temperature sensor and the rectal temperature sensor is reusable. The rest of everything is disposable, including the rectal balloon. We place a Foley catheter. Um, I put a plug on the Foley catheter so that you don't have to wear a bag. Goes to the bathroom, increases his bladder, and um, we'll never. And we give him a trial of what in two to four days in the office. Um, 
usually for microwaves because I use this on larger thrusters, I like to leave a folic catheter till the edema subsides. Uh, for transient and medial ablations across TIVA, I usually do not leave it.